What's up guys, it's Coach Mack. Play fast football. Check out the description box below. You'll see some info on two of our sponsors. Uh, GameStrat, which is uh, the number one source for football coaches looking for a reliable and affordable sideline replay system. We used it this last year and we loved it. And uh, Just Play Sports Solutions, which is providing a more realistic and interactive learning environment for your players through scouting reports and playbooks and quizzes. And, uh, a really good tool that I'm going to dive into uh, a lot more next year. I didn't have the time. I picked it up a little bit later last year and didn't master it and didn't want to use it without knowing all of it. So next year, I'm really going to dive into that. All right, as we get started today, first of all, today's college football playoff. So I've got my Roll Tide football shirt on. I'll be watching tonight at 8 o'clock. So uh, looking forward to that matchup with Alabama and Oklahoma. So I hope you guys have fun with all the bowl games that are going on today and all the ones that have been going on previously. There have been some uh, there have been some kind of ugly ones and some rough ones, but I think you can see even at the highest level of football, you get in situations where teams aren't ready to play, kids aren't ready to play, uh, maybe too many days between games and too much going on at the end of the semester with traveling and tests, finals, and whatever the case may be, no motivation, but there's a you know there's a bunch of teams out there that look like they didn't even show up for the game. And, uh, there's been some decent ones, though. If you're a football junkie, obviously, you just love watching the football games. And, there's a couple more left, obviously, with the playoffs today and a, and a couple uh, bowl games today and then bowl games on New Year's Day and then the finals next week. So I hope everybody enjoys all that. Today we're going to take a look at uh, how we used our dart play within our tempo package. All right, so uh, I don't think the dart play is anything new to anybody. It's tackle wrap. Um, Old-fashioned guys used to run more tackle trap or wing tee guys or single wing guys or, uh, you know, guys used to run tackle trap. Uh, dart is tackle wrap which means tackle will be up on a linebacker. It basically creates an ISO scheme, which is one of the reasons uh, one of the reasons we decided to use it this year. I decided to go to it because it created more of an ISO scheme um, where we could still read somebody and keep it in our option principles. But at the same time up front on the, uh, on the play side, point of attack, it left us with base blocks and double teams and not down blocks to where we had to either uh, kick out or um, get a good block on a squeezing five technique. We, we used dart for me this year. I put the dart play in and replaced our counter play um, with the dart action. And uh, we used it in some different ways, but mainly I used it in my, in my regular read game with key screens and uh, because I, I used it as part of our tempo package that I'm gonna get into in a minute. But the reason I went to it uh, for, for my offense down the road and the way I think, uh, as far as my personnel is concerned, if I had a quarterback that I was going to feature in the run game more like I used to uh, five, six, eight years ago, depending on the talent I had, the dart would replace a lot of my a lot of my jet motion read game, and my quarterback runs would come off the dart action because uh, I think as a misdirection play, again, at the point of attack, I like the fact that I can get a base block or a pass set on a five technique. You can do it either way on, on that front side. You can base block or pass set the five technique, but Rather than when I used to run quarterback counter and a lot of tailback counter stuff, we would run uh, we would run GF or OF, however you want to uh, however you want to term it. The guard would be the kickout player, and our sniffer fullback would be the rap player. And the only thing I didn't like as a misdirection player is as on the front side of the play, away from where we were trying to get everybody's eyes, there was a five technique that was unblocked. And, and you always had to kick him out and good defenses would squeeze and force that play to bounce. And then when we got into trying to run some, uh, you know, some bash action or some, um, you know, some runs away from the eye candy of the sweeps and the tailback outside runs, I felt like the, the, even if we were reading the front side, we ran, we tried to run uh, GT counter, guard tackle counter with off of our jet, jet sweep stuff with our power read and what I didn't like about it was on the front side where I was making a read with the quarterback, if that end gave me a, a keep read, when I kept the ball on the counter play going back, I always needed a really good block on a spilling five technique, or the ball would get bounced and I needed my, my sniffer to be a really good player to get outside the lob. Now if they squeeze really hard and, and they force the ball outside, but the squeeze was so far that on, on the log block, the, the fullback only had to go an extra yard from his normal path, then I didn't have a real problem with that. Where I had a problem with it was when teams would come and kind of squeeze and make the fullback bounce, but the ball started going too wide, as a, 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 you know, for me of, of what I wanted to do. And I felt like 
with the jet action or the running back action, I felt like Power Reed was such a better play for us because when we read the front side, the ball was kept on the front side. So the player that we were trying to manipulate or the player that we were trying to put in a bind, that five technique, when he made his decision, the ball was either going outside of him or inside of him based on his decision with the counter stuff. As great as it is for misdirection and as great as it is for tendency breakers and eye candy and, and key breaker stuff, the counter play, you always used to have to rely, for me at least, on a good block by a guard that was kicking out a five technique and good defenses would squeeze. So what I did was I decided to go to the dark play because I felt like the dark play off of some jet sweep action and off of some tailback action could give us some misdirection. And at the front side point of attack, away from the eye candy, I had base blocks on a five technique or a pass set on a five technique. Um, we didn't run all the versions of the dark play that, that I would like to get to. Uh, one of the reasons was we really only had one quarterback in the system and I was afraid to run him a bunch inside or, or in the interior of the box on, on, on a dark play. Most of the time with my quarterback, his reads kept him outside in the triple option game where I felt like I could protect him a little bit more and he could protect himself a little bit more. All right, so I didn't run all the versions of it, but this was the most successful version for us. I've got it drawn up in two by two. The reason I like it in two by two is because I feel like I can control the backside um, apex drop down player by going two by two. I feel like a lot of teams we play against in two by two will give us a two high look, all right, to give them numbers in the run game so that they can create that seven man box. Um, we don't see a lot of one high. We don't see a lot of rip Liz match cover three. We'll see some of it, but we don't see it a bunch because in the past we've been a team that will run the quarterback and a lot of times in rip Liz match with the six man box, especially with us running some back out screens and some things they lose completely lose uh, a defender to that side. And I feel like it's a six man box, not a seven man box. So we feel like we see way more two high teams. So for us, when we see um, when we see two high, I like it out of two by two because I can control, all right, which is gonna become the front side of the play where the dart is actually going to. I can control that front side drop down in two by two by creating that two high look and kind of dictating to the defense how they wanna play it. Because for me, uh, when we would run this out of two back or when we would run this out of other sets, if they get a defender down weak and we don't do a lot of RPO games where we cross read. In other words, if my mesh is on the right here, I don't, with, with the quarterback that I have, I don't allow him to mesh on the right and read backside in the RPO game. So when that happens to us with a walk down, seven, eight guy in the box to the point of attack, the normal way we handle that is in our RPO game, throwing off of that guy, but with the dark play because the mesh is to the other side and I don't cross read it or opposite read it, all right, we don't throw the RPO back there, so two by two gives us a better chance. So like all the stuff we do in our run game, to one side we're gonna have access throws. In other words, if they give us a loaded box that we do not like, our quarterback can throw those access throws at any time. So on the front side here, it's hitches or takeoffs for us. We keep it about as simple as we possibly can to keep the continuity of the offense and to keep the teaching the same. All right, so our receivers on the front side would either have hitches based on coverage or takeoffs based on coverage. Drawn against a 3-3 three, three, um, or an odd box just because a lot of the stuff we do is always drawn up against an even front, so I figured I'd draw it up against an odd box for us. Play side tackle is going to be man on number two, who we dictate as number two on the line of scrimmage. Again, you can pass set this tackle or you can base block this tackle. To me, the biggest thing is don't let the four, five, whatever technique it is that he has to block, don't let him cross your face inside. we got to win with inside leverage. If we already have leverage based on the fact that he's a shade, then keep your leverage. If you want to pass set a good end to get him up the field, that's fine. That's the original way everybody learned it and everybody was teaching it out of, especially out of open sets with, with a two-man surface. A lot of people were pass setting five techniques to get them up the field. That was an easier block. I'm fine with that. Biggest thing for this kid is just keep your leverage and don't let that guy cross your face. All right, front side, guard, center on the front side are going to double the number one player on the line of scrimmage that side to the backside linebacker. In this instance, in the stack, we would double the nose to the mic. Backside guard, all right, to the side that the tackle is pulling from. He's going to have number one on the line of scrimmage, or who we ID is number one on the line of scrimmage. And the sack front, he's going to work big gap up the backer. All right, he's going to make sure in this front, we're going to read, for us, we would be reading that end right there. So we don't worry about him all too much. We climb to the second level and try and make sure we get leverage and helmet placement on that backer and don't let that backer run across our face. So we would straight climb that because we're going to read that. 
Then on the front side, all right, we have a, uh, a stock block by one with a back out screen by two so that if we do get a pull read, all right, for us, we consider this triple option. So for me, there's kind of, when you get into the RPO world, and, and that's kind of the buzzword nowadays that everybody wants to talk about, to me, when, when I'm teaching it to, to my kids or teaching it to coaches or my coaching staff, I kind of look at this in, in three phases for me, all right? You have a triple option phase, which for me would include any type of read game that we are going to throw some type of stand-up bubble or now screen, or even if the quarterback chose to raise up and throw the bubble screen based on numbers, that would be a pre-snap decision for him. It's part of our triple option pro uh, triple option package, all right? And then we would have also, all right, what I would call access throws. In other words, those are throws built into the run game that the quarterback can take based on leverage of the defense, based on um, the coverage of the defense, based on soft spots in the defense, based on the box he thinks he doesn't like to block. All right, access throws are throws that he's gonna make without going through the process of the run game. Now, it just so happens in our triple option stuff, the way I consider our triple option stuff, this back out screen can also be part of the access. If he decides that he likes numbers and he likes angles, he could raise up and throw this back out screen without even meshing and riding on the five technique. Okay, so the, the front side hitches or takeoffs along with the bubble screen or back out screen is all part of the access. All right, then you get into the RPO world for me. This is just the way I, again, this is the way I teach it to my players, my coaches, anybody that I talk to. If I'm gonna talk RPO, I am simply talking post snap, throws that are gonna occur down the field and throws that are usually gonna occur off a second or third level player, okay? Now, we do have some sniffer RPOs where we do read, um, where we do read a, a five technique and throw the ball uh, to the sniffer. I kind of keep that in my option package because we're throwing a ball behind the line of scrimmage. The quarterback is not running. It's more double option. Um, but for me, it's kind of more of my option package than it is my RPO package. But, um, you know, for the most part, my RPOs for me are going to occur down the field and they're going to be post-snap, not pre-snap. So even when we do include the fullback or the sniffer in some of our RPO stuff, those are all throws that are going to be made to him um, post-snap, not pre-snap. So anything that's done pre-snap for me goes into an access category. So I try to break it down into a triple option theory, an access theory, and an RPO theory. So if we were to run the dark back out screen, even though the quarterback has an option to run or pass the football, just for me in my mind, the way I like to kind of uh, compartmentalize things in my mind so that when I talk to people or I'm trying to garner and gather information on certain subjects or topics or when people are asking me questions, I try and keep things kind of in a system to where I know what people are talking about. So for me, RPOs are gonna be mostly post-snap balls that we're throwing down the field, bubble screens, back outs, or, triple, or things I keep in my triple option phase, and then access throws are things for me that are gonna be pre-snap decisions. So the reason we ran this play uh, out of two by two and with back out screens for me with triple option theories is I love this as an opening play with tempo. So one of the things we do is we use a tempo that I call speedball. All right, speedball is the tempo. We're coming from the sideline. We're going to have a play call and we are going to stay in that formation and we are going to run that play over and over again until we decide to kill it. All right, and get into a different formation or just kill the, the, the play call and call a different play. So when we're playing triple option football for us, it's really quadruple option football because we also have access throws in there. So when we come from the sideline, we feel like this is a great way, especially to start a game. We feel like this is a great way to see how the defense is going to line up. Great way to get our quarterback involved with some easy throws, whether they be quick hitches on the access side or if he does carry the ball out and uh, throw the back out screen. Uh, we feel like we're going to figure out how they're going to play the read game real quick. So for us, it's a great way to start drives and a, and a great way to start a game. And when we do it with our speedball tempo, it gives us the ability to play as fast as possible. So for us as a tempo team, okay, one of the things I always talk about is we try to play fast, we try to play faster, and we try to play fastest. All right, this would be the fastest version uh, of how we can play football. All right, so the reason it's the fastest version is there's no 
uh, formation signal. There's no play call signal. The kids don't have to get anything from the sideline. They just have to get up on the ball and run the play again unless we decide to kill the formation or kill the tempo or kill the play All right, with a signal to the quarterback. This is the fastest way we can play because there's nothing, there's no communication involved. You're just getting up over the ball and running the same play you just ran. All right, so for us, this is the dark play. All right, triple option. I consider it a triple option. Your quarterback will read the five technique. If the five technique squeezes and your quarterback pulls, your quarterback will then attack that apex defender. All right, and he will try and get that apex defender to figure out whether he's going to play the QB or the back out. Most of the times, if it's too high structure, the apex player will be a QB player. So if he attacks the QB, we throw the back out now. All right. The back out screen, we do not bubble on triple option. We back out with width, so our wide receiver backs straight out with width. We don't bubble. It's an easier throw and catch for our quarterback and our receiver when we do it this way. So, yes, we do need a good stock block here. All right, we need width and leverage here. With that width and leverage, unlike a pitch player that would be back here, all right, the quarterback now has an easier read on this guy. This guy either has to play the cue or he's got to widen to play that. He can't play both. He can't slow play when you are backing up with a receiver and creating width away from him, he can't slow play both players. In this defensive structure, he should be a quarterback player most of the time anyways because two outs going to be handled by the corner and the free safety depending on how they play their cover. All right, so for us, the dark play is part of our read game. Uh, it's part of how we can keep five techniques at bay a little bit with how they play and how aggressive they are if they're really good players. It's part of our misdirection package that we build into our offense, and it, it's a big part of what we do with the tempo and how we do the tempo, especially in our speedball package. So it's something for us that we start a lot of drives with, and it gives us the ability to play as fast as possible. All right? As always, guys, remember, uh, if you want to see the full videos on this, you have to go to the website, www.playfastfootball.org. you got two days left to use the promo code, playfastfootball, no spaces. Again, promo code, playfastfootball, no spaces. you got two days left. That promo code will give you 35% off every month in the calendar year of 2019 so that's all the way through 2019 so if you want to see the full video with clips of us uh, running the play and also some other versions of misdirection that i use with the dark play you're going to have to check us out at www.playfastfootball.org i appreciate you guys for watching have fun with the bowl games roll tide and remember you won't play well until you play fast i'll catch you guys next time <laughs>